All right, guys, welcome to lesson 9.8. Today we're going to learn how to graph logarithmic functions. So here's the steps we're going to be following to do this today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the domain. Um, we've done that before. We'll review that in a moment. Um, and what that does is that tells you where the vertical asymptote is. Um, so all of these graphs have a vertical line. It's kind of like an invisible boundary that your graph cannot cross. So all these are going to have some kind of a vertical asymptote, and it is found by finding your domain. Um, after that, we're going to pick two x values, and I'm going to make a change here to these instructions real quick. There we go. So we're going to pick two x values um, that are, I would say, at least 10 units apart that are in the domain. That's important. Uh, remember, for logarithmic functions, you can only pick certain values of x that are actually a part of the domain. So we'll have to make sure that when we pick our values of x, they're in the domain. We also want them to be 10 units apart because, as you guys can see, log functions grow pretty slowly. They don't go up very far. So if you pick two points that are too close together, it'll almost look like it's horizontal and it's not. Um, so if you pick two points that are far apart, you'll see a little bit more of the direction that it's going. So pick two x values that are at least 10 units apart that are in the domain from step one. And then our goal there is to plug them in and solve for y. That will give you two points that you can plot. And then after that, you can just connect your dots. And our graph should look like one of the following. Uh, this is the standard shape here, but it can go backwards if there's a negative in front of the x. It can be upside down if there's a negative in front of the y or it can be upside down and going left if there's a negative in front of both the x and the, the log itself. So um, anyway, um, we're not going to really worry about transformations too much when we graph logs. These steps will take care of the direction for us, but it should look something like this ultimately. Um, so without any further ado, let's begin our first example here. So um, for step one, we want to find our domain. To find the domain, you take the arguments and you set it as greater than zero because that part of a log has to be positive. So we're going to go ahead and solve that, and that will tell us our domain. In other words, what x is allowed to be. And in this case, we see that x is allowed to be greater than 2, but that's it. So it can't equal 2 and it can't be less than 2. It has to be greater than 2. And that means we're ready to go ahead and move on to step two, which is we're going to plot our, our uh, vertical asymptote. It's at two. So I'm going to go over two, and then I'm going to draw a vertical line. Make it dotted, though, because it's not really a part of our graph. It's just an invisible line that our graph can't cross, but we're going to represent that invisible barrier with this red dotted line there. So that's the vertical asymptote, and that's step two. So I'll label that as step two. All right, step three, we're going to pick two x values that are a part of our domain. Now, remember, our domain is x is, has to be greater than 2. So I'm going to label that real quick. Go back to using black. I'm going to pick two x values that are greater than 2. Um, so let's do our first x value as maybe like pick a number greater than 2, like let's say 4. And let's pick another x value that's at least 10 units bigger than that, like 14. Okay. And once again, I just picked 10 as a random number. But the point is, is you want these to be far apart. You don't want to be too close together. Otherwise, your two y values will be really close together and it'll be hard to tell what direction your graph is going in. All right. So... Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and do some calculation. Um, we're going to plug these numbers in. And this, by the way, is step three. You're going to pick your x values and plug them in to get your y values. So let's start by plugging in four. So I'm going to take my log equation here. And I'm going to plug four in for the x value, just like that. And now I'm going to simplify it. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 minus 8 is 8. Now, 
you have your choice sometimes about how to go about solving this. Usually what I'm going to recommend you doing is doing the change of base formula. But in this case, I'm not even going to use my calculator because I know what this is. 2 to what power equals 8? I know this has to be 3. So if you can do mental math, go for it. But if you did the calculator change of base, you would still get the same answer. You would get 3. And so we have 4 plus 3, I'm sorry, 4 times 3 plus 1, which is 13. And so I get my first y value in there next to the 4 is going to be 13. So when x is 4, y is 13. We're going to repeat this process now. And we're going to plug in 14 this time. All right, so let's go ahead and work this out, see what we get. Uh, hmm. 14 times 4, that's 40 plus 16, that's 56 minus 8, uh, 48. All right, now this is one I would not be able to do mentally. So this is one I would definitely need to use my um, change of base formula for. So that's going to be log 48 over log 2. And we'll see what we get here. So let me get my calculator going. And by doing that on my calculator, I get 5.585. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my multiplication and addition. And I get 28.9, which is pretty much 29. When it comes to graphing, there's no reason to get too precise with your final answer because we can't really graph really small decimal numbers anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it 29. And we're ready to go ahead and sketch our graph now, which is step four. Um, so let's go ahead and plot those points. So for my x-axis, I went out to 14, because that's my biggest number. For my y-axis, I went up to 29. And I counted by fives just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Um, so at 4, we're at 13, so go over 4 and go up to 13, which would be roughly right about here. And then at 14, which is way over here, we're going to be up at 29, which is here. So now we can kind of see the path that our um, log is taking. So it's on this side, and it's coming. It's going to be um, coming down, and then it gets flat against the asymptote. And so there's what this logarithm would look like approximately. Okay. So there's our steps, and that would be step four. So step one is to find your domain. Step two is to sketch your asymptote at that domain barrier. Step three is to pick some x values from your domain and plug them in to find the y values. And step four is to graph those dots and connect them so that you get one of those log shapes that I showed you on the steps. Let's go ahead and do another example. Um, Let's see, example number two. So step one, let's find our domain. Um, and if you guys want to practice this stuff, I'm not including any student practice today. I'm just doing examples. Um, I'm going to do four examples, and that's it. So if you wanted to practice this stuff, then I would encourage you to pause the video um, and try as much of it as you can, then check your work when you're done. So for the domain, we have x minus 3 needs to be greater than 0. Adding 3 on both sides, we find that x needs to be greater than 3. And therefore, now I'm able to graph my vertical asymptote. It will be at 3. Okay, so there's my domain. And that ends my second step as well, graphing the asymptote. And we're ready to move on to the third step, which is picking some x values that are greater than 3, making sure that they're a pretty good space apart. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 5, um, and then I'll pick something like 15, 10 spaces away from that. Um, now, if you don't want to pick 15, you want to go a little closer, like maybe only 5 spaces apart, maybe you pick 10. It's fine. It's just that the farther apart they are, the more you'll be able to see the direction that this graph is going. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. We get minus and then log. And I'm going to plug in the 5 first. Now, this is a nice situation here. We have log base 10 of 2. When you have a log base 10, you don't need to do change of base. You can. You'll still get the right answer. But you don't have to because the calculator already does. Uh, base 10 anyway. So you just need to type that in your calculator just the way it looks. And by doing that, I end up with negative 0 0.301. And then I'm going to add 1 to it. And I get, um, just a minute, let me calculate it, about uh, 0 0.7. So it's like almost one. I don't want to call it one, um, but it's going to be a little bit less than one. So we'll say 0 0.7, 0 0.7. All right, let's go ahead and repeat that process now for 15. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here and I'll get my answer. And I end up with about negative 0 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these points. So if I call this 1 and this negative 1, uh, 5 is going to be here. And then 15, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 15 will be way out there. So 5 and 0.7. So here's 5. 0.7 will be almost at 1, but not quite that high. And then 15 will be at negative 0.2, which is really close to zero, actually. And as you can see, it barely went down on that interval. But we can see the path it's traveling. So we're going this way now. And it gets flat against the asymptote that way. So there's that logarithmic function. All right. Let's go ahead and do another one here, example three. Um, every one of these examples has a, something a little bit different, like um, this one here. I had it going upside down because of the negative in the front. This one has an LN in it. The last one had a log. So I'm picking four examples. Each one has something a little different in it. It's not meant to be mind-numbingly repetitive. There are a few differences that pop up along the way. Um, so watch carefully for those little differences as they pop up. All right, so step one, we're going to find our domain. So that would be 6 minus 2x is greater than 0. And here's where one of those differences occur. Something special about this problem is that in the process of solving it, I have to divide by a negative. And when you divide by a negative, you have to remember that your inequality flips around. Okay, So I'm going to draw my little vertical asymptote here at 3. And let's see what effect that has on things. Um, we're going to... Make, pick some x and y values here that are less than 3. Less than 3 this time, not greater than 3. So let's go ahead and pick 0, and how about negative 10? And let's see what we get by plugging those numbers in here. All right, so I'm going to plug in 0 first. Now, once again, this is an ln function, so that's also just a nice little thing to have right in the calculator. So I really just need to push ln of 6 first and then multiply it by 3. Um, I don't have to do change of base on this one. And I get about 3.3, .3. so that's what I get by plugging in 0. I'll round at the tenths place, at least. Um, I don't want to think of it as 3. I want to make it 3.3, .3 so I know it's a little bit bigger than that. Let's go ahead and plug in our next number, which is negative 10. And let's see what that one comes out to be. And for that one, I get about 9.8. So let's go ahead and graph this. We're at uh, 3, then we've got negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
My y-axis goes up to about 10 as well. So 0 and 3.3 .3 is going to be like right about here. And negative 10 and 9.8 will be somewhere up here. So we can kind of see the direction of our graph there. It's going like this. All right. Let's go ahead and do one more example before we call it a day here. All right. So we have negative 3x plus 4 needs to be greater than 0. I'm dividing by a negative again here, so the arrow is going to flip. 4 divided by 3 is approximately 1.3. Since we're graphing, decimals are a lot more friendly, so I would encourage you to do some um, decimals here instead. So if this is 1 and this is 2, 1.3 would be approximately like here. So that's where I'll draw my vertical tangent line there. All right, we want to pick some numbers that are less than 1.3 to plug into our table. So I think 0 is less than negative 3, and I think negative 10 is another good choice. So we'll go ahead and plug those in here and see what we get. And once again, I'm not providing student examples here or student practices. So if you guys just want to pause and try these out, you can um, see what you get. I get negative 7. And by the way, this is one that I did mentally because negative 3 times 0 is just 0, right? So really, I've just got log base 2 of 4. And so this one is something we could do mentally. 2 raised to what power is 4? Well, that would have to be 2. And so from there, you could just do your math and you get negative 7. So um, keep an eye out for those ones. If, if you're sharp with your logs, you could save yourself a little bit of time. All right, let's go ahead and move on to do the negative 10 one. All right, so let's see what I get there. And I end up getting something pretty close to about negative 13 for that one. So let's go ahead and plot these points. My x-axis needs to go out to negative 10. My y-axis needs to go down to negative 13. All right, so 0, negative 7. Maybe right about here. And then negative 10, negative 13 will be way down here. So from there, we can see the direction of our graph is like this. And there's our log function. So that's graphing logs. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And we'll see you in class to practice this stuff. Have a good one.